ask me why I do not talk that much. You say, you used to talk so much. Why don't you talk that much anymore? And you ask it so suddenly, I do not know what to say. So instead, I ask you, have you ever tasted the quiet? No, you say. OK, that's fine, I say. Well, have you ever tried to reach your fingers forward in a field full of flowers and pull them back, ripped and bloodied by thorns? No, you say. OK, um, well, have you ever tried to taste the quiet? Have you tried to listen how this to the, how the static rings within itself? I'm sorry I'm making mistakes, but have you ever tried to listen to how a vacuum sounds like? No, you say. And you frown in a way which tells me you find me strange. I'm sorry, I say, and I try again. Well, have you ever tried to describe what a vacuum looks like? Tell me what the absence of nothing, what the presence of the absence seems to be. And as your words sculpt to try to form the answer to my sentences, I already know what you're going to say. And I know you do not know the answers to my questions, and you shouldn't. Because see, there was a time when I found those questions just as strange as you do. There was a time when my body moved so freely, like every movement was a song, and the air wasn't trying to mold my bones into a grotesque tribute to the abandoned. You see, there was a time when the rain wasn't justification for my temperament, when crowds just meant clumps of people, and not a constant reminder of how lonely, how lonely, how lonely I am. You see, there was a time but being by myself wasn't such a disquieting thing. But back then, it felt like the world belonged to me. And so I didn't seek people to carve doormats into. You see, I didn't try to, or expect people to curve their bodies into my homes. You know, the thing about the lonely is that we are haunted. And no one wants to turn into a haunted house. And so you slowly begin to learn how the ringing of a door slamming into your face over and over and over and over and over again sounds like you see, you slowly learn of the definition of isolation. And you learn it when you're in a group of people you love, in a group of people who will accept anything, in a group of people who won't find it weird how I rush my sentences or how my words break in the middle of their own sentences. You see, you'll learn then that isolation isn't reserved for those stuck in the middle of grand oceans, but instead is to you, the person in the middle of love, and yet who feels like they're sinking beneath an ocean, who feels like they're under the tsunami wave, who feels like there's no oxygen around them, and they keep clawing at the air. And then you learn the cruel irony of how we are born alone, we die alone, and yet the concept and the mere thought of being alone for our entire lives <coughs> so terribly painful. You know, my body doesn't curve inwards to pose as, at, as the end of your questions. I taught my lips to love the sound of my breaking words as I scrape them from the surface of my throat and expel them into the air and watch as they rise, they float, and they fall because no one likes catching broken words in their palms. Broken words lead to bloody palms. No one likes blood, and so I've taught my lips to love the taste of their own blood because that's what my, seem, my words seem to be doing. Breaking, 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 you see. I am so tired of watching how friends shift from friends to acquaintances to strangers to friends to acquaintances to strangers over and over and over again because I cannot give them the puzzle pieces of me to form my image. You see, these days I've been looking for dictionaries and every store I pass, I stop and I ask for dictionaries so to make sure that my face and my name is not under the definition of the lonely. You see, I know it's unfair that I expect you to be the astronomer to my constellations, and yet I do not let you look at my night sky. You see, I've learned the difference between the lonely and those who are alone, and I know that I am not alone. You see, the next time you ask me why I do not say that much anymore, I will tell you how the lonely steals my words and tucks it beneath its sleeves. I will tell you how every time you come and talk to me, I think you're talking to someone behind me or I think you're going to leave. I will tell you how every time my words break within themselves, I get scared that you're going to leave me. I won't tell you of how every time you come to me, 
my heart aches and is so happy you're there, not because I'm in love with you, but merely because I cannot stand the thought of being left alone within my own haunting silence. And so, the next time you ask me why I do not talk that much, I will ask you that if a spaceship explodes in the middle of space and no one's around to watch it explode, who is it exploding for? Instead, I will ask you that if you try to stare at stars in the daylight, and you know they're not there, does it still make sense to search for them? Instead, I will ask you, what's the point of screaming when you know that there is nobody and that no one will ever listen? Thank you.